In Graves Harbor County, the parents of missing five-year-old Oakley Carlson will be in court today. The two are charged with endangering one of their children. They have not been charged in the search for missing Oakley. Investigators believe she was last seen alive on February 10th. According to court documents, her disappearance was reported by her principal after one of her siblings told her Oakley was, quote, no more. The search has involved multiple departments, including the FBI, but last month detectives told us that the case is still open. They are finished searching the family house and property. Before Oakley disappeared, she lived with a foster family for over two years, and during that time, they said there were multiple red flags while she was in their care. They disagreed, of course, with the state's decision to send her back to her biological parents' home. This morning, Oakley's former foster mother, Jamie Jo Hiles, is back live with us on King 5 Mornings. Thanks for being up with us uh, this morning. Um, you played a big part in the search effort and now the push for more laws to protect foster children. Since we last spoke with you, Jamie, we've seen the hashtag Oakley's Law trending as well. What can you tell us about all this? Give us an update. Uh, well, good morning and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, basically, like we, um, I have some people in the community that are just really fighting hard to uh, make sure that a change happens in Oakley's honor. Um, so uh, there are two people in our community that have um, started a petition on change.org. It's since closed. Um, it garnered almost 7,000 uh, signatures. And in an effort to just make sure that legislature knows that this should never happen to another child. Um, Oakley is definitely uh, on Twitter too, like as far as trending. Um, if you just type in her name, there's tons of people from all across the United States that mm -hmm. are really supporting her. And I just, I am so grateful for that. Yeah. Have you been able to speak with uh, the biological family at all? Uh, the grandparents, have you been any in any communication with them? No, mm -mm. I have not. And if you were able to speak with them, what would you say? I think we just need to do everything we can to find Oakley. Like, what can we do? What can we, like, maybe, like, there's things that I don't know that she liked to do as far as, like, maybe where they went or um, maybe there's just things as far as, like, places. I'm not sure. I just, I think that um, I would just want to ramp up anything we can do to find Oakley. Have you tried to reach out to the biological family at all? Or are they just shutting you out? No. I just, like, I think... Ever since uh, Oakley was returned to her biological family, it's just been kind of a, you know, almost a respect their privacy type thing. So I never wanted to reach out when Oakley was with them to like, um, not not confuse her, but I just didn't want to um, mm -hmm. traumatize Oakley by her seeing me or like hearing about me. So I kind of just cut that off pretty quickly. Mm, okay. Uh, what are you hoping comes out of this uh, at this point uh, in the process? I really, at this point, you know, we're a month in, I really just want answers. Um, that's the thing that uh, it's difficult to go to bed at night sometimes when I just think about like, where is she, what has happened to her? And so if I could have resolution or have some kind of like idea of what's happening, I think that would be the best for my husband and myself. But um, that's kind of what I, I just want that. And then of course I want justice for Oakley. Like I, I think that a lot of people in our community are really angry about everything with DCYF and the parents. And I think that there needs some, uh, you know, there needs some change to happen. Do you think enough is being done right now to search for Oakley? Yes, um, I fully trust our law enforcement. Um, I know that I have been in contact with uh, the detective since the day that Oakley was announced missing. Um, I bet you every week um, I send him a text message just to kind of say like, hey, like, is there, any new updates and I know that he can't tell me a lot because I'm not like part of this case, but he's so kind and he always is willing to text either my husband or myself back and say like, hey, we don't have any information right now or hey, we have some things, but um, just, you know, just we're working every single day on this. So um, I do believe that they are doing the absolute best they can to look for her. You know, you've been posting on social media a lot of new pictures mm -hmm. and video of young mm -hmm. Oakley. She's such a beautiful girl. We haven't spoken with you since Christmas, since the holidays. What was it like um, knowing all that this is happening and knowing that Oakley is still missing? Um, you know, I Christmas is one of my favorite holidays. Um, but I think the thing that was probably the most like different for me is the snow. Like Oakley loves snow. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that was kind of a bummer especially that it snowed, you know, on Christmas day and we had all that. snow. I know that she would have just loved it. And so I wasn't even excited that it snowed. Normally I would be out in it. I'd be playing in it. And 
I just wasn't even able to really enjoy that because it's just sad knowing that she wasn't here with me to experience that. Mm. Jamie Jo Hiles, thank you so much for joining us once again here on King 5 Mornings to talk about uh, what you're going through. We appreciate your perspective. And again, we'll be following this story very closely as her parents are going to be in court today. Thank you. We'll right. be right back.